welcome to the first gone but not forgotten of 2022 and it is the biggest yet we are celebrating all the fords that were sold in the country and no before you point out we haven't forgotten the josh machine we have not even forgotten the mondeo or the escort we will have that later on in this video but we are going to start off with the fords that really made ford the enthusiast delight we got the mustang we got the figo we got another figo we got the fiesta the aspire another fiesta the echo spot an endeavor and another endeavor one of the older generation endeavors these are the vehicles that really made ford the driver's delight in the country of course we don't have ford anymore in india Boo -hoo. but let's celebrate what made this brand really hot in the country and before we go ahead let me remind you to hit that bell icon to hit the subscribe notification stay notified for all our video drops and if you enjoy our gone but not forgotten series a series that we put together with so much love and of course a lot of effort give us a thumbs up and share this video with like-minded enthusiasts and remember to say that echo spot is the best handling in any segment that the echo spot is in telling stories so bear with me on this short one so like i mentioned ford's indian innings began with mahindra 50 50 joint venture then two three years later ford gave mahindra the option to invest in that massive manufacturing facility that they were putting up in chennai to make this car the icon Mahindra, they thought about it and then they decided that that 500 odd crore rupees that they were going to invest in the Mahindra Ford joint venture, they would rather use that to develop their own product, their own platform. And that's how the Scorpio came to be. So that's when the joint venture, the two partners went their own ways. And then in October 2019, that's when full circle, everybody came back around and Mahindra and Ford announced a new joint venture where Mahindra would be in the driver's seat. Mahindra would own a 51% stake, Ford would own a 49% stake and all of Ford India's assets, the two manufacturing plants, all of that would go into the joint venture which Mahindra would lead. And that, well, that was going to make a compact SUV. Adil spoke about it on the Thrill of Driving podcast. The link should be somewhere out here. And he said that it looked really cool. It would have done really well. The Echo Sport, that was going to get a new lease of life with Mahindra's turbo petrol engines. And then the crucial bit of that puzzle, the XUV 700. Ford was going to make their version of the XUV 700. Pininfarina were told to design the Ford top hat, the design, the Ford design. And insiders who've seen sketches of that Ford XUV 700, they say that that looked much better than the XUV 700. But Ford, they didn't believe the 700 would actually get terrific response. They didn't think it would do big volumes. And that's why the whole joint venture, it went kaput. In fact, December 31st, 2020, that's when it was announced that the joint venture was ending. In fact, at the stroke of midnight, they announced the press release came that the joint venture was on the rocks and that was it, the end of the joint venture. But had Ford believed in the XUV 700, Ford would probably still be here in India. Insiders tell us that with the strengths of the 700 and the Ford styling, that would have looked really cool. That would have definitely found buyers. Look at the response the 700 has got right now. But then, long story short, no Ford in India. But now, let's get back to driving the other Fords that made the brand so popular amongst enthusiasts in the country. The Icon was launched with a 1.3 litre petrol and this, the 1.6. This is the ZTEC Rocam engine and it was a mighty fine engine for its time. Made 90 odd horsepower. This was the time when the Icon would compete against the city. The city was obviously more expensive. But this was great fun to drive. Ford, they called this the Josh machine. They got Niren Karthikeyan who was on his way to a Formula 1 seat thanks to Ford's support to plug the Icon. And this was a driver's delight. Of course, this car is a bit old, not in the best of shape. So have a look at another car that we drove, which we have pictures of and check it out. Of course, there is a lot of body roll that is evident in the images, but you can also see the inside rear wheel lifting up and that just shows how good the platform was. The front end, it had great grip. The steering, hydraulic steering, no electric power assist back then beautifully communicated great fun it really plugged you into the whole driving experience this was such a fun car to drive 
Of course, in those days, Overdrive and Autoka, the two big rivals, Autoka, they really kept banging the Ford drum. Whereas we at Overdrive, we were great fans of the city. And when the VTEC came, well, there was no question which was the faster car. But these were the two really hot cars that you could buy back then. On hindsight, if you ask me, the Icons platform, the chassis, it was the more engaging of the two. The city was a little too soft. Of course, the city had more space, more comfort. It was more expensive. It was more luxurious. But the Icon was more chuckable. Where the city scored was that engine. First, the regular 1.5 in the city and then the VTEC. Oh my God, the VTEC. There was nothing that could come close to it. And it was the engines that saw Honda really pile on the steam and get ahead of Ford. But otherwise, this car, what a nimble, engaging, enthusiastic car. A proper Josh machine, as they called it. There was also a facelift on this icon, which honestly, ugh, not nice at all. And then, 11 years ago, Ford pulled the plug on the icon after really flogging this platform to death. It was the Figo that put the wind in Ford India sales. S-A-I-L-S and S-A-L-E-S. Because this, it really sold. And not without reason. This was engineered for India. It was affordable. It was good in terms of the dynamics. It was good in terms of the ride. It had good engines. It really had everything going for it. It also marked the start of Ford's that kinetic design language that they introduced. The Figo was launched in 2012. This one that I'm driving, this was the facelift that was launched, I think, in around 2012. And it had everything going for it. Good looks, good space, good dynamics, great engines. Even today, this diesel engine, it's like a rocket. There's a bit of turbo lag evident, but it just moves so well. It's done 1.5 lakh kilometers. Of course, it is noisy. I must tell you that it is extremely noisy. But in terms of getting its job done, it does a really nice job. This was also one of the most affordable diesel cars you could buy in the country. Apart from that Celerio diesel that was very short-lived. And I think the Beat diesel. So one of the most affordable diesel cars. Very affordable petrol also. And with the Figo, Ford brought in a revision on their spare part prices. So earlier, Ford prices were expensive. It was expensive to service, maintain, run a Ford. With the Figo, they revamped all of that. So by the time this 2012 Figo, the update was launched, all of that was sorted out. And today, servicing a Ford is as cheap or as economical as anything else, as economical as a Maruti, as a Hyundai. They really turned that around completely. I think they didn't really communicate that enough, but ask any Ford owner and they will say that it is very reasonable to service and maintain a Ford. Even today, Ford actually is committing to its customers. There was a full page ad in the Times of India, I think last week, where Ford reiterated its commitment to provide service to its customers to make sure that all the cars are taken care of. So that's a good thing. And that just shows the ethics that Ford really has and had back there in the country. Though, the fact is that they did leave India, so... Well, that's nothing to do with ethics, so... They were good, they were good guys. Honestly, the Ford guys, they were good guys. May not be the best salesmen, but great engineers and just great overall guys. <laughs> Ford upgraded the Figo and I mean completely upgraded the Figo so it got completely new styling it got improved dynamics courtesy the improved platform it got completely new interior so these interiors were also seen on the Fiesta a nice steering wheel and it also got peppy engines now crucially the diesel was upgraded from the 1.4 to the 1.5 power went up from 92.5 to 99 bhp and significantly the decibel levels went down so the red figo noisy especially on the outside really noisy 
this one in terms of the nvh is actually pretty nice pretty good even by current modern standards it is pretty good and you go around the first corner and you immediately realize that the sophistication in the platform really went up a couple of notches so the ride quality was better and also more refined the damping was much better the handling more eager more cornering grip and overall actually very nice these seats when i sat into this before starting the camera first thing i realized was the seats are actually very nice very supportive look at this cornering even by today's standards if they were to relaunch the figo change the shape and just retain the platform such a nice car to drive the steering is so nice it is light but it is communicative and it is direct it's engaging we really praised the figo and then they launched the figo s on the evo fleet we had a long termer they had that in both the petrol as well as the diesel and that was the best handling hatchback in the country how they made such good cars but didn't manage to sell them well the figo s it actually really boggled the mind because it had revised suspension tuning stiffer anti roll bar so it went around corners really well but ford they never really harped on the sportiness of that figo s such a shame people want enthusiastic cars but ford didn't realize it people were buying ford because they wanted fast cars that handled well but ford didn't realize it they didn't capitalize on their actual strengths What a shame. I hate to see good driving cars go. And then there's also the fact that Ford did not do anything after this. So after 2015 when they launched this, that was it. So this Figo in this same shape and this same form, it continued till the very end, till 2021 when Ford pulled the plug on their Indian operations. So from 2015 to 2021, that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Six years, seven years. They continued with the same shape. How can you continue with the same car for seven years? Obviously, nobody is going to buy it. Especially when today the likes of Hyundai, Kia, they are upgrading the cars every two years, three years. What a pud! This nothing. They didn't do anything. No wonder. No wonder. Great driving cars like this, not finding buyers, really frustrates me. Because we are enthusiasts. and we know that our breed is not very small if our breed was small the polo would never have lasted 12 years no chance the compact sedan segment it's not very hot these days but 10 15 years ago this was very very important it was in fact as important as compact suvs are today and that's why ford they stuck on a small boot onto the figo to create this the aspire now these days compact sedans they don't really look like compact sedans because they're very proportionately styled and designed but this this definitely looks like a hatchback with the boot a small little boot stuck on at the back that's it the aspire it retained the strengths of the figo and that was good dynamics a good set of engines and very reasonable running cost for that sorted out their service the cost of service the cost of spare parts all of that were completely sorted out and the aspire is still very very reasonable to service so that's it nothing much changed inside the aspire so it had the same space as the figo the same interiors everything remained actually the same as the figo it retained some of the figo's characteristic traits but because this was softened a bit to give it a better ride it didn't handle as sharply or as enthusiastically as the figo and in any case i think if you wanted a sharp enthusiastic car you'd buy a hatchback you wouldn't buy a compact sedan the aspire you don't see too many of them on the road and it wasn't a great sales success for ford because after all in the compact sedan class everybody wanted a desire that was it the desire was the start and the end everybody tried even volkswagen tried with the meo and that was short lived this aspire it has the 1.2 liter petrol engine makes 95 horsepower but it's actually the diesel that was the more enthusiastic engine that made 99 horsepower and of course in terms of the running cost and everything the diesel did outshine the petrol but of course the diesel was more expensive 
and the Figo, that entire family, those were not heavy cars. So the power to weight ratio of these cars were actually quite good. So even though just a 1.2 liter engine, but moved with pretty good enthusiasm. After the Josh machine, that was the icon, Ford then encouraged us to go fitter over this, the Fiesta. This carried on in the same enthusiastic vein as that icon and really raised the bar for everybody else. Now, this was the Fiesta. The Fiesta was launched in 2005. It had the 1.4 petrol, it had the 1.6 petrol, it had the diesel. But this, the 1.6 S, this was the standout model in Ford's range. It looked cool. It had those bumper extensions, side sills, the wing, 15-inch alloy wheels, this lovely, attractive blue shade. And then Ford of Australia, they re-engineered the Fiesta to make it a little better in terms of the driving dynamics. So, there's stiffer suspension. I don't know if they lowered it. I doubt they lowered it. But they really made this go around corners brilliantly. I remember back in my overdrive days, we did a track test at the MMRT with the City. I think that time it was the City, the ZX, and this. Now, the City was faster in a straight line. The VTEC engine, it made more power. But because this Fiesta handled so well, it actually posted a better lap time around the MMRT than the City. A friend of mine in Chennai, Aditya Bedre, the very famous photographer, he's got a Fiesta 1.6, but with a turbo done by Race Concepts, by Joel at Race Concepts. And that thing is a monster, a monster fast car. I think that is the fastest Fiesta in the country today. And this engine, it actually, now nah, I wouldn't say this engine lent itself well to tuning because the city Vtex was much more amenable to a lot of hot rodding. But in just base trim, this was a lovely car. And if you saw a blue 1.6 Fiesta S, that meant it was driven by an enthusiast. The owner of this car, he was telling me earlier in the day of how he went to buy it. So when they first launched this car, that time he didn't have enough money to buy it, but he knew that he wanted to buy this car. So eventually when he had enough money, he went looking out for it and only the dealer in Goa had this in blue and he wanted it in blue. So he took a bus from Pune, went down to Goa, got to the dealership on a Sunday. The dealership stayed open on a Sunday for him. He paid. All his money was spent on this Fiesta and he drove it back to Pune. And since then, he's had this. So he's had this car ever since new. And he loves it. Even today, he loves it. Ford even worked with tyre suppliers to work on the compounds, the construction, so that it would complement the handling of the cars. I know that they worked really long and hard with the guys at MRF to make sure they had really good rubber to work with the car. Just look at the grip on the front end barely any understeer and I like the fact that it is proportionately tired. It doesn't have too wide tires which would make it, you know, give it too much grip but won't give it that finesse. So it grips well but just about enough. So you want it to slide also a bit. You want to play around with the car and these Fords, they let you play around with it. In 2011, Ford really committed to a global product strategy and they brought in the Fiesta, which was then current all over the world. This ushered in Ford's new evolution of the kinetic design language. And honestly, it looked really good. Very striking, very in your face, a big grille, expressive headlamps. I think this was amongst the nicest styled Fords around. And it got some interesting tech. So on the 1.5 petrol, you got a twin clutch automatic gearbox, a DCT gearbox. Now, this DCT gearbox was only available with the petrol, whereas the diesel was only available with a manual gearbox. So you couldn't get the automatic on the diesel. But this DCT gearbox shifted well and by the standards of the time, it was actually a good gearbox, except it had no manual control. So it had low range, so you could stick it in low range if you're, say, going up a hill. But that's about it. There was no manual control over this DCT gearbox. So you really couldn't exploit the quick shifting abilities of this gearbox. 
Ford also claimed that its gearbox was a sealed unit, so it did not need any maintenance. And we haven't really heard of too many customers complaining about issues with this DCT gearbox. So obviously, it was well engineered and quite reliable. But this generation of the Fiesta, it never really sold. It never took off. I think the pricing was completely out of whack, and that's why people really didn't take to it. And the other problem was that it wasn't very spacious. So the Fiesta was against the Honda City. That's what its main rival was. And look at the space inside. If you look behind me, there's, there's this much. This is what probably five inches of knee room. So behind me, nobody can really sit comfortably. Whereas in a Honda City, five people could sit comfortably. And that was a big failing. Plus, it was expensive. This was not priced aggressively. It had to be priced aggressively against the Honda City, but it was not. It was good to drive. That was a given. It handled well. That was a given. And we praised its handling. We praised its ride quality. But apart from that, Ford did themselves no favors with this generation of the Fiesta. Absolutely no favors. It came with this Motorola razor like layout for the center console. So, all these hajar buttons out here with the keypad. If you remember those Motorola flip phones, the razor phones, this was inspired by it. And back then, it did look cool. Today, my god, the number of buttons will take an hour to just count the number of buttons out here. But it's a sign of the times. The Fiesta also had the Microsoft Sync system with emergency calling. So right now, all the cars, those connected features, they've got emergency calling and SOS and all that. But Ford, it had it in 2011. And then in 2015, this was out of production because it just did not sell. It made no sense to have this Fiesta in the portfolio. And quietly, Ford discontinued it. It was a shame because if they had repriced it, positioned it a little more aggressively, this might have sold. This 1.5 petrol engine, it made 108 bhp, so it was a quick motor. The diesel, it made 89 bhp, so by the standards of its time, it was adequate, it was quick enough. And plus, like I said in the past also, the Fords were always well engineered and they were light, they were not heavy cars. So this actually could really pull along quite well because it had competitive power to weight figures. And this was it for Ford sedans in India. Of course, you already know that Ford now no longer makes sedans all over the world. In the US, their main market, they moved completely to SUVs and pickup trucks. So this Fiesta is also a milestone car for Ford because this marked the end of Ford making sedans in India. This was the last sedan they made in India. And after that, they focused on hatchbacks, SUVs, and of course, imports like the Mustang. The Mustang. Let's go and drive that now. That's all the time we have in this Ford special of Gone But Not Forgotten. Part 2 drops tomorrow on Flashback Friday, where we will be driving the Mustang, Mondeo, Fusion, EcoSport, and the old as well as the new Endeavor. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified for the video drop. Make sure you subscribe to the Evo India channel. And if you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and share this video with like-minded enthusiasts.